Hi folks, welcome back. This video is going to be a little different flavor than my previous ones. I realized here recently that I can't keep focusing on all the death and destruction. It's not good for me. It's time to focus on rebuilding society now and base it on something that's way more natural. Meet our ancient relative, the bonobo, amazingly similar to humans very friendly too look at the smile on the face and the big wave one of the really interesting things about our two closest relatives the bonobo and the chimp are that the chimp is a patriarchal culture and the bonobo has a matriarchal culture i don't think there's really any question that we look more like the bonobo than we do the chimp if you look at the facial features there isn't much difference in the diet between the two species. Uh, the chimp tends to eat a little more meat and the bonobo tends to be uh, more vegetarian. Did you notice that the bonobo hunts flying squirrels and small antelopes? Are you wondering how a bonobo can catch a flying squirrel or an antelope? When I show you how they do it, it's going to shock you. Here's the amazing discovery right here, and you can look up the article if you want to read it. These animals are obviously way intelligent to be able to make spears to go hunting. And you can see it in their eyes. Look how curious this bonobo is at having his picture taken. Look at this cute little baby here focusing on that flower. They're very affectionate animals here as you can see. Here's a mother mouth-feeding her infant, which is something that humans probably should do, given what we've learned from the microbiomes in our body. They take care of their elderly, too, not like our patriarchal culture. And you see the women working together to share the child care. How different is that than our society? Notice how the females here group together for their own protection and that the males don't dare try to break that group up. Here's one happy bonobo. This bonobo, on the other hand, is pretty disgusted because they gave him some spoiled uh, food to eat. Since the chimpanzee has the uh, remains of the bonobo DNA in its DNA, most likely the bonobo is an older species. Matriarchal cultures are cooperative, not competitive, like patriarchy. This discovery here is more amazing than the bonobos making a spear. They can build a fire and cook a meal, too. I think science has been looking in the wrong places for the missing link in our human evolution. The bonobos even have the same vocal flexibility as humans do. How can they ignore all this evidence? Here's a bonobo being creative and painting a picture. How much more human-like can you get? The bonobos are highly sexual, and we're just like them. The only difference is, is our culture teaches us to repress it. Look at this young female here flirting with this big male. She's got a big smile on her face and eye contact from hell. Here's a female comforting a male that doesn't look too happy. Here's a great book by uh, Dr. Evelyn Reed that I highly recommend. Uh, she pretty much documents the transition from matriarchal clans to patriarchal nuclear families. In the book, Dr. Reed explains that human civilization began when human females started to band together in larger groups for the protection of themselves and their young, just like other wild herding animals do. According to Dr. Reed, the females had to exclude the males from the tribe at first because the males were too aggressive. In essence, females have a longer evolutionary social history than males do, and they've been slowly socializing males to get us to the point where we are now. Men like to take the credit for all the technological advances we've made in the past, but take a look at the essential knowledge 
items listed on this slide right here and who does most of those jobs today there are a lot of differences between males and females and each sex has its own needs that are complementary to the other sex unfortunately our patriarchal society is not acknowledging those social and physical differences this is a really interesting chart here you can see that the males do all the dangerous jobs obviously which we've always done the dangerous jobs but look at the stress level in the bottom row down there you see the females are really stressed out at work could all that stress be because they have to compete in a patriarchal society from the bottom two charts here you can see that most women agree that they should be treated equally but they aren't the disturbing part is in the top two pie charts where 13 percent of women believe that feminism is empowering women over men when it's obvious to the rest of the women that that's not the case and the first pie chart over half the women are not feminists they aren't even fighting for their feminine rights I'm not going to dwell on the negative here but patriarchy has put a whole lot of effort into manipulating the female perspective I find it very interesting that the ants and the bees and many other insect uh, species are matriarchal as a matter of fact the vast majority of species on the planet are matriarchal and polygamous which one of these two philosophies looks more natural and sustainable to you the ancients had great respect for females and for good reason the Egyptians were even matriarchal at one time before the pharaohs took over there's another aspect of our society that's directly related to our biology too notice that the generalist is way more adaptable than the specialist now comparing the generalist with the specialist you can see that the generalist is right in line with matriarchy whereas the specialist is in a line with patriarchy and that's reflected in our educational system and our scientific system it's been proven that generalists outperform specialists in big business and make more money than they do here's a funny cartoon I found but the guy's right on I mean women are generalists I love this quote right here but I would substitute the word community for the word places now let's take a look at the eight most common marriage problems number one on the list a passionate sexual relationship sounds like we ought to go back to matriarchy to me as a matter of fact every single one of these would improve under matriarchy now let's talk about the one thing we apparently love even more than sex from my perspective patriarchy has separated women and imprisoned them in little comfortable jail cells that we call houses ignoring the social injustice for a moment this is obviously a very inefficient way to live every household has to buy a house has to buy a car uh, everything else when if you shared resources it would be way cheaper for everybody all this materialistic competition just increases jealousy and don't forget about envy even the cures for jealousy point back to the matriarchy you can see from this uh, high chart of average expenses that if we just shared housing expenses we would save a lot of money and if we shared added uh, automobile and food and other things in there we could save even more now imagine that 10 people shared one house and they would save a lot of money and then they could pool all that money and invest it into a group business it's a win-win situation for everybody now here's some psychological factors that people overlook in relationships now if your friends and family aren't living with you how are you going to even observe these factors much less give them some support 
This forces isolated people to reach out and ask for help. And people don't like asking for help. Here's another problem we, we created by not living in extended families. Now ideally, you want some kind of a plan like this where you have a house with a central open area for group activities and then uh, bedrooms for each single person around the outside and then you'd have a shared uh, uh, kitchen and bathroom facilities. In my case, I can rent a three or four bedroom house in South America for pretty cheap and as the group grows we'll just split the uh, the rent two or three or four ways. When the group outgrows the house then you just rent a bigger house. I think that's a better option than buying property down there and uh, taking the South American land from the South Americans. It would be better to include the South Americans in the household. Temporarily I can rent out the extra rooms as a, a hostel or a bed and breakfast type of deal. If anybody's interested in moving to South America, you're welcome to come down and stay with me while you explore the area and decide what you want to do. I'm going to look for the safest place I can find at an altitude of probably 5,000 feet or so to offset the equatorial heat. South America is the most stable continent on the planet and the people already have an extended family structure. That's a big advantage right there. That's it for this video, folks. I'll see you next time, although I don't have any idea when that'll be. But take care.